we're going to get started on our next session, which is called Targeting the Big Guys, Account-Based Sales Development. So, Lars, Indeed. thanks for coming. So, let me read, let me read Lars's uh, intro. So, Lars spent his career building Silicon Valley inside sales and sales ops teams, and now he's built a sales methodology that transforms how businesses approach high-value targets and generates demands through a tested outbound approach, which is called account-based sales development. So I know we're all eager to hear about what that is, but um, I, I want to hear about you first, Lars. Sure. So, so, so how, how long have you been at Cloudera? Uh, two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah. And you, were, you spent time at True Ventures before that? Uh, yeah, I was an adv uh, advisor, sales advisor to True Ventures. Uh, before that, I ran sales operations and inside sales for a company called ArcSight. Mm -hmm. Before that, I did the same two uh, roles at a company called Riverbed Technology, and before that, a company called Portal Software. So two and a half years ago, what, 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 uh, you, you joined Cloudera, and then seven months ago, you became the VP of Global Sales. Correct. So tell us about what, what, what happened there. Yeah, I took, uh, actually, uh, I took a haircut in responsibility. I was running both uh, field sales operations and also inside sales. And Cladera as a company has now grown past 1,000 employees. We're a multi-hundred million dollar revenue run rate company. And I know and most people know what Cladera does. Yeah. Take a second and tell us what Cladera does. We're a Hadoop distribution vendor. So uh, if you've heard the term big data, uh, we provide big data solutions for companies. So if you're a big company, you have a lot of data, uh, you have a big data problem, uh, Hadoop uh, uh, technology can, can help you there. Okay, so, so, so about so two and a half years, so seven months ago, you were running both organizations. Yep. So what shifted? We got really, really big, and uh, we had uh, uh, an influx of new um, uh, leaders and they wanted uh, me to specialize. So it was, what path do I want to take? Uh, the exact same thing happened when I was at ArcSight and we got acquired by Hewlett Packard. I was running both organizations, and as you get bigger, um, to allow for scale, they wanted me to specialize. Uh, and I've always chosen the, the revenue path, so I chose inside sales again. And so uh, when you chose to move to inside sales, you, and maybe they're right, right? Because you were able to focus and make a number of changes, right? So, so tell us a little bit about, about what you did. Well, when I came in, uh, I inherited a team of six SDRs and an SDR manager. Um, and I started to uh, build out the team. Uh, two and a half years later, we're now at 45 SDRs across the world. Um, one of the things that you end up realizing you have to do when you hire younger SDRs is to create a career path. So I looked for uh, ways to allow for growth in these ranks. And uh, in the last year and a half, we've built out two additional headquarter inside sales focused teams. One is called Renewals. Um, it's an overlay team. Uh, and another one is called Corporate Sales, which is a quota carrying headquarter uh, based uh, inside sales team of ISRs, if you will. So, so everyone knows at some point, as you, if you want to grow sales and you've, you've got the demand or you can generate the demand, you're going to have to hire people. But, but you didn't just hire people, right? You, there was a specific methodology that you had in mind as you were growing and building the team. Um, yes, but it was one that was hampered by uh, trying to hire quickly here in the Bay Area. Um, and so I made a very conscious decision a year ago to uh, switch my inside sales center in North America to Austin, Texas. Um, and within six months, we were able to hire 25 SDRs, which likely would have taken me all year, if not more, to do that here. I also saw uh, that SDRs that you hire here in the Bay Area, they, get, uh, they start getting calls from recruiters within six to nine months of doing a job at a, at a company like Cloudera. And so I was losing um, SDRs to ISR positions at twice, sometimes two and a half, the OTEs that I was able to pay them. So um, in the United States, we moved our center to Austin. Um, in Europe, we're in Budapest. And in uh, Asia-Pac, we are in Singapore. So between the three centers, 
Um, we have the three roles, and we have about 65 to 70 inside sales professionals. So let's, let's focus back on this methodology. So uh, obviously, you need, the, you need the people and the support in order to launch this methodology. But let's talk about what that is now. So Let me uh, first just take a quick step back. So uh, the cool thing with being involved in a company like Cloudera that is defining an entire industry is we get the benefit of having lots of inbound inquiries, or MQLs. Uh, we actually generate, our marketing organization generates 30 to 40,000 inbound inquiries a quarter. Um, and in large part, the SDR team was set up to manage, triage, research, um, and disposition these inbound leads. So wait, did you have an SDR team before you hired? Yes, we had six okay. SDRs that were managed, uh, not a lot of process. So their, their jobs every day was to manage these inbound leads. Um, uh, regardless of where they came from, regardless of uh, their score, we didn't have scoring, we had no way of filtering or prioritizing, we were just running around trying to cherry pick um, these, uh, these inbound inquiries. Um, one of the things I love about uh, technology is today we have these sales 2.0 technologies that allow us to filter, score, nurture, um, and prioritize. Uh, so uh, the first thing I did was begin to implement technology so that uh, we could make the SDRs that were managing these inbound inquiries more efficient. Um, as we started to tune that engine, we began to realize that we were not getting the amount of inbound inquiries against the companies that we wanted to go after. We understood at Cloudera that our target addressable market were large companies um, in five or six different industries uh, in a couple of different places in the world. Um, and when we finally got a piece of technology that allowed us to understand exactly where these inbound inquiries were coming from, a very small percentage of them were coming from our target addressable market. So we realized we had to do an outbound approach. Yeah, so, so two, two questions. One. Of the out, of the, you were getting a lot of inbound inquiries, and you had the SDRs following up on them, trying to figure out which ones to turn into real leads. How many of them actually turned into actually revenue and, and customers? Um, well, when you get that many, um, we or, also... Or percentage-wise, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, not a very high percentage because of the sheer volume of inbound leads. But we were... The SDR organization back then was generating about 20% of the pipeline that was going uh, in the field, I would say, 15 to 20%. And again, very small organization. Um, I came in at a time where we had 11 quota-carrying outside reps. Um, within about a year, we grew that team from 11 outside to about 75 in one year. And today, we have over 150 quota-carrying sales reps across the country. Uh, excuse me, across the world. Okay, so let's, let's step back for a sec. So you, you look at your inbound sales, you look at the process, and you're realizing that they're really not, there's really no great methodology, which is a bunch of volume which yep. you're trying to sort through. So you said you used some technology to help you sort through them. What, what did you use? So we found a technology from a company called Lean Data. Uh, and I call them, I call them a lead, uh, lead conversion engine. Um, what it allowed us to do was, we, we know who our customers are, we know who our active prospects are, and we know who our partners are. Um, we get lots of inbound inquiries from existing customers. We're constantly inviting them to events. Uh, our existing active opportunities, uh, in-flight deals, we're constantly in touch with them and inviting them to certain things. So the inbound activity from those accounts they're known to us. They're not exactly SDR relevant. They're relevant to the account execs that are managing those accounts. But they were coming in at the top of the funnel, and our SDRs were spending an inordinate amount of time getting an inbound lead from an existing customer, doing the research, realizing they were a customer, reaching out to the rep, saying, what do you want me to do? No need to do anything, just flip it over to me. So today, uh, we've created libraries. Uh, our 800 to 1,000 customers 
are in the Lean Data Library. If anyone comes in from any of our events, they automatically get converted from a lead object to a contact object, and they nest perfectly against the account object in Salesforce. We do the same with our active uh, prospects, and we do the same with our partners. We have a 2,000 plus uh, partner ecosystem, and we have a lot of partners hitting our website, going to our webinars. They're generating almost 20% of our inbound traffic, okay. and they spend a lot of time researching, triaging false positives. Okay, so that's, that's inbound, and then you just said a moment ago that you realized that you needed to do more outbound. So let's talk about outbound, because yeah. I think that's really where the, the guts of this how to ABSD. No, no doubt about it. So uh, we found out, uh, we did a, uh, we ran some reports. We wanted to find out, at the time we had about 500 customers, and we ran a, a, a report in Tableau that showed um, our new logo sale is generally a lot smaller. ASP may be anywhere from forty to eighty thousand um, dollars. And in year two and year three, uh, for us at Cloudera, the uh, the the right thing to have happen is for that fifty thousand dollar deal to go to a two hundred fifty thousand dollar deal to go to a, a million dollar deal. So that is the progression that we hope for, um, and we've seen many, many times if we do the right thing on the back end of a sale. When we ran this report, we found that a large portion of our revenues were coming from the expansion of our new logo uh, deals that were in the enterprise. So companies above a billion dollars in revenue. Um, and a, a, an unbelievably large part of our revenue was coming from this. So it was a very easy decision to make when we segmented our global field organization into strategic, uh, which is above 10 billion in revenue companies, enterprise, which is one to 10 billion, and then corporate sales, which is below uh, 1 billion. The lean data technology allowed us to realize that most of the top of the funnel inquiries were coming in against below $1 billion companies. So SDRs were spending a lot of their time um, triaging and researching and, and going back and forth with not companies in our target addressable market. So that's what led us to realize if we don't start uh, doing outbound campaigns, and obviously they're going to be a lot colder, whether they're email or phone, um, but we have to do this because we're not getting inbounds yeah. the rate we want. But, but you figured out a methodology that made them not quite as cold as they might otherwise be. So, so we did. That. Um, at the time, uh, so We've been tuning uh, our marketing automation uh, technology for years, uh, but it's typically one that's used by marketers to nurture and blast big volumes of whether it's lead or contacts. Um, we've been uh, using, uh, we've used ToutApp, we've used Yesware, we've used Outreach. This is a, I'll call it uh, an SDR email sequencing platform. Um, and it allows us to set up these email sequences uh, to individuals that we've targeted. Yeah, but let's back up for a yep, second. Okay. Um, and we can talk about some of those catchy emails, but, but how did you target those individuals? Because that's kind of what's key here, right? How, do you, how, how did you find these individuals? It wasn't just send out a bunch of random spam emails from lists right. that you found somewhere. Right, so we had, uh, we had about 500 uh, existing customers. We had done a bunch of deals in a bunch of places in the world, in a bunch of different size companies, uh, in a bunch of different industries. And we'd been cataloging and indexing the stakeholders, the buyers, uh, the uh, people in procurement that we were talking to. So uh, when you understand who your buyers are and what their titles are, um, it's very easy to go into, whether it's data.com or discover.org or LinkedIn, and run searches and socially source other names of people at other companies uh, that you can target. So that's exactly what we did. And so, um, okay, so then, so then you, you developed a target. Basically what you did was, right, you, you looked through LinkedIn and you scraped, like anyone who had, what, descriptions of, of the things within their profile, not just, not just titles though, right? Right, so uh, if we wanted to target a company like American Express, a big financial uh, services vendor, um, we know that uh, people, anyone that has data architect in their title, 
uh, is going to be relevant. They're, they'll not only likely know a lot about Hadoop and big data, they'll also likely know who we are. Um, anyone with business analytics is likely also going to know uh, what we do and who we are. Um, anyone that has Hadoop engineer anywhere in their LinkedIn profile is absolutely going to know who we are and what we do. And you knew this also by looking at who was buying before and who your contacts at the, at the customer, the existing customers were, and you could use that criteria to more target with specificity who might be future buyers. Is it, that that's correct? exactly right. Uh, for those of you that are in younger companies, and whether you're at revenue or not, every single sales cycle that you go through, make sure you understand and log all of the people that influenced, that helped guide, direct, and help you sell into that company, because those will all become the the titles and the roles that you're going to be targeting. Um, and again, they're different in small companies than large companies. They're different in FinServe versus uh, health tech versus uh, manufacturing or retail. And then what you did was, you know, there's a lot of different individuals within a company in different areas, like you just said, in different groups who might have that title. How did you decide who to target within that company? So when we do an account-based sales development campaign for the first time in any large company, we'll actually uh, pick five to 10 titles and go across departments and vertically. And again, realize that when we do one of these campaigns, we're not doing it to a bunch of companies. In a, we're doing it to one company. And so everything that goes into the, email, the three emails that we're authoring is to a person at one company that's in a certain vertical in a certain part of the world. So we can customize a lot of the content in the emails so that it will resonate with the person that we are sending it to, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's much, it's, it's much better than just a random, a, a random blast, right? Yeah. It's very specific. So tell us a little bit about the response rate that you get from the, those emails. Yeah, so that's what, uh, we did our first one, and from there, everything kind of unfolded. Um, we got a 70% open rate across the three emails in our first uh, EABSD sequence. And our uh, reply rate, people who actually opened and then replied and, and, and gave us a call to action, it was 30%. Previously, when we were using uh, our Aloka marketing automation platform to send out uh, nurturing emails to different segments of our lead database. Um, our average uh, email open rate was five to eight percent, and our average email reply rate was two to three percent. So this was an order of magnitude, if not more, and we knew that we were onto something. Yeah, seventy percent open rate is mind-boggling, right. right? I mean, I, that, that's highly unusual, and actually, actually to go from such a low percent before. So not only, I, I would think that not only is it specifically targeting exactly who you need to talk to within the organization, but clearly there was something catchy in your email. Right, right? well again, and we see it right here. So uh, subject's obviously a very big deal. Um, so this was to, I believe it was an airline, uh, a major US airline. And, we, I think we sent this one to a director of data architecture. So if you're the director of data architecture and you get an email from someone at Cloudera that says big data insights at, um, it, it's to you and it's referencing your company. And then the very first sentence is, I recently read a Wall Street Journal article citing your CIO who said he was considering Hadoop to better analyze that's the hook, that's the catch, that's hopefully the reason why they will continue reading. Well, they'll read that because it's like, oh, that's I right. can look good in front of my CIO if I can learn something from this email. So these are highly, highly tailored specific emails that you guys have researched. So yeah, once you've generated these great leads or great potential that's right. audiences, you have the ability now to focus more heavily on the specific content because it's not a scattershot. Is right. that correct? It, correct. And if you look at the five bullet points, those are specific use cases that we have solved for other like companies. So provide recommendations based on mobile app, snack, or beverage purchases. That's likely something that this person at this airline is noodling through and trying to figure out. So our hope is that he reads through these and realizes, holy smokes, they've got use cases that they're solving for other airlines. I better get on this. Um, 
and if you go to the next slide, so the email. So, so this is, is this is so this is now if they didn't respond to the first one, right? Just to be clear, yep. this is that thirty, that little thirty percent who didn't respond. That's you're not right. going to let them go. Okay, so here's that's right. Tell us what you send. Um, so yeah, that's the cool thing about the technology. If someone opens and or replies, they will not get the second email in the uh, in the sequence. So and again, if they didn't do that, this one goes out two and a half to three days later, and it says, "Hey, Johnny." I wanted to follow up on my previous note. So again, we're telling a story. And we've just layered in three additional but separate use cases for that industry. Um, and so what's the open rate on this, on the second? Uh, and I'll, I'll show you. They're about equal. Uh, and again, another 70% of that 30% gets? Yes, another 30% uh, uh, reply rate, another 60 to 70% open uh, rate. Open rate. Um, and then, and for those of you that have been around or that get a lot of SDR emails, um, you'll recognize this third one. We call it the Hail Mary. And they come in a lot of different flavors um, and forms. Uh, and we're experimenting with a bunch of different ones. We used to do the, this is not a, it, this is not a you moment, it's probably a me moment. Or maybe there are some of you that have seen the, uh, you must be getting um, uh, tracked by a bear. Um, we do an ABC just to see if we can uh, attract uh, someone who's maybe been busy. And we're completely blown away at the open rates and the reply rates to the third one because there's no content. Okay, in you it. know I'm all about numbers. So what's, right. the, open, what's the open rate so and the reply rate? So if we go rate? back three slides, there's a, a four slides. If we go back, bam, that's it. So, um, and again, we use outreach.io as our SDR email sequencing platform. So if you take a look here, if you look at the bottom and the group of bars there, there you see the email open and reply rates for each of the three emails. And the coolest thing for the SDR is when they author these sequences, they write all three emails at the, at, you know, before they send it. And then they hit the send button. And now they get to sit back over the next seven, eight, nine days and just watch as the uh, right, what is it, uh, in Vegas, slot machines, right? Uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, and most of their time is spent following up on the email reply activity because when you send this out to 50, 100, 200 people and you get a 30% reply rate, you're talking about 15, 20, 30, 40 emails where people are literally asking us to call them to set up a meeting. So if you look at this, this original one went out to... 90 prospects refers to the number of emails that we had and loaded in the system that we sent out. We had a 32% bounce rate. That's a hard bounce rate. So only 63 of the original emails actually got delivered to the first uh, uh, 90, 63 out of 90. The beautiful thing about the technology we use, when you get a hard bounce, it will automatically cleanse and, and delete those uh, emails and people from your salesforce.com CRM. So it's a self-cleansing system. Every time we run a campaign, we're cleaning our database. Um, so you can see here, of the 63 emails that got delivered, over the three email sequence, 200, there was 204 deliveries. So after email two and after email three, there's drop off from the opens and the replies. And that's what I love about the intelligence of these platforms is that it allows uh, SDRs to just set it and forget it. Um, and again, there's no doubt in my mind that over time there are going to be companies that roll all of this function functionality up into one suite. I know that uh, Kyle at Salesloft is looking at this. Uh, John Miller at Engageo uh, is looking at consolidating a, a bunch of these pieces. Uh, ben at Datanize is doing the same thing, looking at uh, where he can leverage. Uh, but today, we use Salesforce. Um, I don't know that there's a ton of lead conversion engines, but what Lean Data does for us is literally magic. I've said it before, I think it's one of the biggest advances in CRM in 20 years. Um, taking down that brick wall or barrier from the lead object to the contact object. Um, we've used all three of these email sequencing platforms that you see here. Um, again, we also use all three of these, I'll call them contact-relevant databases. Where do you find, where are you going to augment your list of people that you're going to target 
once you've decided on an account to do an ABSD campaign into. Um, and so, then, yeah. Go Sorry, go ahead. And the last piece is just your CTI, your dialer. And again, we've, at Cloudera, have used lots of different ones. Today, we're using TalkDesk. Um, and again, there is a lot of phone activity that follows up. If the inbound email reply activity isn't enough and we get a very low reply rate, um, we'll start outbounding to the opens. Um, we don't do much to the people that don't do anything because there's always been enough follow-up for the, at least the opens that we do. So there's a lot of work, needless to say, that has gone into creating this infrastructure to create really great leads as opposed to having people spin their wheels, which one, I think makes, you know, sales salespeople are always in high demand, especially good salespeople. It also, I would think, uh, impacts their their own quality of, of feeling good about what, what they're doing. So, so are there, are there, so I have a couple more, I have a couple more questions and then I want to open it up to questions and we probably have time for one or two, which is, which is, are there certain types of people that have embraced this more readily? Because there's a ton of work. This isn't just dialing for dollars, right? This is, there's a lot of work and thought that goes into it. And then yeah. second, like what kind of team do you have that builds this support structure in order to create what you've created here? Yeah, so the, you, hit, you hit right on. The amount of process and procedure and technology that goes into building this best practice, uh, you have to have people that have done it before. You have to be sober when you come in because there are a lot of moving parts. High bar. No. Yes. Um, I do believe, though, that this is a much better best practice to hand to an SDR team because, uh, rather than a, a quota carrying sales team. But didn't you tell me, I think you said that the most successful ones have actually been the really new junior folks, right, who were able to be trained, or was that someone else I was talking yeah, to? Yeah, no. So uh, I can hire a 21, 22, 23-year-old student at a University of Texas in Austin, and I can show them our ABSD playbook, show them everything that they need to do, give them access to all the templates, um, and run them through it once or twice. These are kids that have grown up in an age where they're multitasking, they're playing this. They're used to having lots of different things open, and they're used to being, um, uh, they've been able to handle this. And I never hired uh, a person out of school before I got to Cloudera. But because we have taken a lot of the complexity from a salesperson and uh, built this stack of technology and process, we can hand it to just about anyone and just say, go do it. And right now, we have, we have 45 going to 65 SDRs. Uh, we have 20 SDRs that are pointed at our North America strategic and enterprise segments that are well-trained. Right now, they do about one of these a week. Uh, the very best are doing two a week. And again, realize these are going into one account. So that's 20 to 40 accounts that we are targeting every week. Um, we are going to hit every single target account, and we have about 3,000 of them. Our target addressable market at Cloudera is companies above $2 billion in revenues. Um, and there's about 3,500 of those in the world. So it's a very manageable number. Um, and so... How much, is, uh, how much of this process are you, is your team and the sales ops team doing versus the marketing team? So, uh, good question. Um, we uh, the SDR management team uh, handpicked all of these, trialed them, and we procured them uh, through our sales operations team. Um, we noodled through all the process and all the procedure. Uh, the messaging that we are... Uh, putting in the emails are coming from our subject matter expert team, which is aligned to our uh, field uh, consulting or sales engineering organization. Um, the, for the first time, we are partnering with marketing, uh, and it's, it's been about a year we've been running this on our own, but we now believe that with the account-based marketing approach that our marketing team is taking, we're telling them a month in advance when we do an ABSD campaign into a particular account, go and run an account-based marketing campaign and start, not flooding, but start pointing the ad buys at the people at that account so they can see our logo, they can see our brand. And so they're warmed up by the time the, your first email goes in, then they're like, oh. That's right, that's right. So that is, we are 
we just kicked off our first few campaigns literally this month. So we hope to see an even uh, uh, an uptick in the opens and, uh, and, and reply rates. Great. Yeah. That's, 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 that, that sounds really effective. I look forward to seeing what your, what your growth looks like next yeah. year. Um, do we have time for one, two questions? OK. We've got one over there. Thank you, Lars. Um, I have a two-prong question. So the example you gave for the email to the C referencing the CIO, um, firstly, uh, was there a reason behind not reaching out to the CIO directly? And secondly, if, if you did reach out to the CIO, went through the three email cadence and so forth, and uh, got shut down, what, what may have been some approaches uh, that you've done in the past to still get into that account? So the CIO was a part of that ABSD campaign, so he or she got one too. Um, we certainly uh, take C-level executives, we take VP, director, uh, into, we, we take individual contributor all the way up in that first campaign. Um, uh, the other thing that we do is not only are we using the names that we source from LinkedIn and other areas, but we've been running our instance of Salesforce at Cloudera for about five years. Uh, we have quite a few opt-in uh, contacts as well uh, in our database. And one of the things that we do very um, specifically is when we do an ABSD campaign, we split it up into two different campaigns. One to all of the opt-ins, right? They've uh, clicked on a, a, a web link, they've gone to a webinar, they've gone to a trade show, we have their name in the system. And then we do one to all the members that we've sourced that have never opted in. Um, and what we found is we find the same reply and email rates from both kind of constituencies, but the actual meetings that we set are much higher from the new contacts that we've never interacted with before. Um, not sure exactly why that is. Uh, so the SDR today spends a lot of time making sure that they can source as many titles that we believe are relevant to the pain that our solution solves. Hadoop solves pain high and wide in a company. We're lucky. We can, uh, in some companies, there are over a thousand people that will care about what it is we do. Um, we won't necessarily send it out to a thousand people. We like to do it in 50 to 150 to 250 person chunks um, to see what the um, uh, response and reply rate is. Hopefully that answers your question. You pick, Lars. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. Um, thank you so much for covering a marketing function. It's been a decided lack of that content at this show. Um, what has your marketing team done? Obviously, now they're rolling out ABM. Um, very hot right now. Um, what has your marketing team done prior to when delivering those um, MQLs to ensure the highest quality um, of, uh, of qualification, ultimately, to your SDRs? So we've spent uh, years uh, futzing, uh, messing with different lead scoring mechanisms. Um, and I can honestly say that in two years of uh, using a couple of different companies who tout lead scoring algorithms and methodologies, I don't know that we've been able to hit on anything that has given us. Um, so we've seen this. So we together have uh, helped try to tune that scoring mechanism, but I don't think we've licked it at all. But I think what's happened now that we have outreach and we can show them um, that we're not getting the percentage of inbound leads against our highest kind of valued targets, we can show them and say, um, here are our top 50, our top 100 accounts in this region and this um, uh, vertical. Let's do a campaign in New York uh, because right now, we just hired three new guys in New York to hit the financial services vertical, and we have very few inbounds against our top 10. So we're helping create visibility for marketing to show them exactly where we're not getting inbounds. Um, and I think that has been the biggest help to them, is seeing 
where their leads are coming in and where they're not. Yeah. Quite a bit of research. Uh, have you looked at automating the content of that email without uh, a business development rep actually doing the research, being able to use some kind of automation tool to grab that content and fill out that template automatically? Yeah, so uh, we've had our subject matter experts write anywhere from 10 to 15 use cases in each vertical. And we have that in a Google Doc, like in a library, where they can just go pick. But that first hook, it's, I mean, what they did was they put airline, and then they put Hadoop. And then within a couple of seconds, they found that story. So the SDRs themselves are finding the hook that they use in that first email. And then to fill out the body of the email, they go to airline, if that's a vertical, uh, or they call the subject matter expert and they say, hey, I'm doing an ABSD campaign and I want to do it into the health tech industry. Um, and then they'll have a, a conversation. And our list of use cases by vertical is growing every day, every week from the interaction that we have with our subject matter experts. So we're just going, and, and again, indexing those bullet points of the problems we've solved for other light companies. Um, and again, um, once they've seen it done once or twice and they see the, I mean, they're just making their job so much easier by sending these out to 50 to 100 people at one company and getting replies. Uh, we've had sales reps that have said, listen, stop creating appointments for me. I can't get to all of them. In a lot of these accounts, before, where we would break in and get one meeting with one person at one account, they would stick and move and go to the next account. These campaigns are garnering 5, 10, 15 appointments across many different departments, high and wide. And so we are literally blanketing these companies with our brand, our message. Um, and sales reps are coming to us saying that I've been doing this for 25, 30 years. I've never seen anything like this. Um, and so now that they're on board, uh, we spend a lot of time interacting, the SDRs do, and the AEs help us prioritize where they want their SDRs to spend their time. But more importantly, we're now, we have, I think it's demand base. They help us understand signals that we're getting from companies that are hitting our website. So there are companies now that are kind of self-selecting and raising their hand um, that we can see because they're hitting our website, uh, you know, this many times a day. An SDR might go to his or her AE and say, listen, Coca-Cola, in the last two weeks, we've seen a spike in activity uh, against Cloudera assets. Why don't we do one there? Um, and, and so there's a little bit of give and take there with the SDR as the quarterback deciding together with his or her AE what account that they're going to hit. Well, we are out of time today. Actually, we're over our time, but Lars, thank you so much for sharing this incredibly impactful thank approach. Thank you, Mom. Um, 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 um.